Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, what's so jarring about this hearing is that sort of in bloodless and bureaucratic language, we are talking about the compromise of information of fellow Americans, and from the Federal employee point of view, the most catastrophic compromise of personal information in the history of this country. Social Security records. Ms. Archuleta, you mentioned that not health information, but health carrier. That is a roadmap to other information hackers can get. Security, security clearances. Security clearances are deeply personal and, and often involve, do they not, Ms. Seymour, unconfirmed negative information, even rumors. I think so-and-so has a drinking problem. That gets in that report even if it is not confirmed. Is that not correct? Sir, I am not a Federal investigator, and I am not familiar with the, all of the precise data that is in those. Yeah, well, let, let me confirm for you. It was a rhetorical question, really. It is correct. It, it, it is from how do we protect our employees? Dr. Osmond, when I heard your testimony, it almost sounded like you were saying that the good news here is we detected the hack. But the object here isn't effective detection, though that is part of the process. It is prevention and preemption to protect our citizens, including Federal employees. You talked about Einstein, and you championed its, its merits. Was Einstein in place? at OPM when this hack occurred? Sir, I share your deep concern about the loss of, of uh, this information and agree that that is uh, a, a terrible outcome. Uh, a terrible outcome. Absolutely. As a Federal employee whose information is itself a part of this database, I feel It might even be personally devastating, Dr. Osment, not just a terrible outcome. I, that is correct, sir. Um, what I would tell you on this was that um, Einstein was critical in this incident. Um, as OPM implemented their new security measures and detected the breach. Was Einstein in place at the time of this breach? Einstein 1 and 2 have been in place at OPM. Einstein 3 is not yet available okay. for OPM. I, I, to just, if, I've only got two minutes. Um, I want to understand your answer. So did it successfully detect a, a breach had occurred? Um, it did not detect the breach that OPM caught on their own networks, because just as the cyber threat information sharing legislation we are focused on uh, acknowledges, you first have to have the threat information. Um, Einstein 1, once we had that threat information, we used Einstein, Einstein 1 and 2 to detect uh, a separate breach that we were then able to work with. I am sure every Federal employee who had his or her information compromised is comforted by your answer, Dr. Osmond. Ms. Archuleta, what was the time gap between discovering there had been a breach and the actual breach itself? We discovered the breach in April of, uh, of this year of 2015. And when did the breach occur? Uh, we, um, we suspected it happened earlier um, in, in um, 2014. So sometime late last year? Yes, sir. Okay. So, so they, whoever were the hackers, presumably an agency of the Chinese government, according to published reports confirmed by U.S. officials, it is not a classified piece of information. Uh, the details of it may be, but it, uh, our government, I believe, has confirmed without attribution uh, in public records that it was a systematic effort by the People's Liberation Army, which has been notorious for hacking all over the West, uh, that uh, got its hands on this data. So, that, so they had four months in which to do something with this data. Is that correct? Maybe five? Um, I can't make a comment on, the, um, on attribution. I didn't ask you to. I just asked whether they had four or five months to do something with this data. The, the period between when discovery of uh, the, the time that we believe the uh, breach occurred and our discovery, yes. All right. I, I'm going to real quickly, if the Chairman allows to Mr. Scott, one last question. 
the head of CERT, the director of CERT, um, says, if agency implemented three steps, we could prevent about 85 percent of breaches, and I am going to hold in abeyance new investments in new technology, because Ms. Seymour talks about legacy systems, and I had always hoped that the Chinese didn't know how to hack into COBOL. Uh, but that is a different matter. Okay. The three things are minimize administrative privileges, two, utilize application whitelisting, and three, continuously patch software, which interestingly does not go on. Would you just comment, what is your take, professional take, on those three recommendations? I, I think those recommendations are uh, great, and there is a number of other things as well, some of which I have talked about today. I, I think the one point I would make is, there is no one measure that you could say that is going to prevent all attacks or even prevent a attack. Um, it is really defense in depth is your, is your best uh, measure, and that is what we are uh, really looking at emphasizing. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 